Kablam! This episode of Series 11, Kablam! The Doctor and her friends, they receive a parcel from... of affairs from the kind of intergalactic shi shipping service, Kablam! If you want it, Kablam it! However, also within the box, they discover a note saying, help me. So they end up going to the Intergalactic Shipping Company to try and figure out exactly what's going on. Who sent the note and try and work out what's happening. Clearly, this was an episode kind of, of a kind of commentary on kind of modern day shipping companies, such as uh, Amazon and eBay. And I was highly critical of this episode kind of going in, and I, I just thought to myself, oh boy, oh boy this is going to be something. This, this might turn out to be a bad one. Yeah, at least it might be a little bit fun. But honestly, yeah, it's a very fun episode, and it surpassed the expectations I had. As minimal, as bad as I thought the episode might be, this actually turned out to be a pretty fun little episode. I mean, yeah, just them... And just them trying to work through the parts of the packaging company, that, that's kind of fun to watch. And, yeah, the people that they meet are pretty good as well. And the robotic postmen, they, they're, f they're, kind of, they're funny, but they're also slightly sinister, which works really well in Doctor Who's favour. I mean, I mean the, ult the ultimate plot, the ultimate, that they find out kind of what's happening, that... It's kind of stated throughout the episode that only 10% of the workforce at Kablam is human. The rest of it is all automated, a highly automated system, and that the person behind everything is trying to kind of lower the trust in an automated system so that the kind of percentage of human or organic people employed will rise. Yeah, it's a little, little complex, but I... Once again, like all the great villains, you can kind of see what his what his motivation is. I mean, even if you don't necessarily agree with what he's saying, you can understand it. And that's, I think, what many great Doctor Who villains, as well as many great villains in general, can do. That even if you don't agree with them, you can understand why they're doing what they're doing. There's also kind of a quite funny bit that he ultimately plans to make people kind of lose trust in the system by having people killed with explosive bubble wrap. I mean that that for me that was a question of okay that that's funny that's absurd but then that's also kind of realistic because let's be honest when you receive any type of package that has bubble wrap in it one of the immediate things you have to do is pop some of the bubbles. I'm sorry it's a rule of nature that we all do it. Kind of, everyone kind of takes a moment to pop the bubbles. We, that's something that we all enjoy doing. And so to have actually popping the bubbles being what led, led to your death, it's absurd, it's silly, but it would work. Yeah. I mean, they also have a very good cast in this episode. I mean, even though he only has a very small role, one of the actors I was particularly excited to see in Doctor Who was Lee Mack, whom I... You know, I've seen on you know, many panel game shows and his sitcom uh, Not Going Out, which I always thought was fairly funny. I mean, as I said, he only has a kind of a small role in this episode as one of the people who works in the packing department, Dan Cooper, but yeah, but he has this moment, and when you actually find out what happens to him and to some of the others, it's also a little bit a little bit uneasy. But that's often the thing about kind of Big big companies and big warehouses. I mean, even though they might be commonplace nowadays and might be something that we all use, they can also be a little bit sinister if you get the kind of right viewpoint. So yeah, an episode that I didn't expect to be very good actually turns out to be kind of a rather fun episode. If one that looks at something that's fairly commonplace, but then that we all use, and then making it slightly sinister. And honestly, I think it works. I think it works very well. Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best episode. I mean, not when you got ones like Rosa and Demons of the Punjab. But yeah, I'd, I'd say it's still a pretty good episode. I'd, I'd say on par with the first episode, The Woman Who Fell to Earth, which 
I think we're placing it in third or fourth place. I actually think it's pretty good. Yeah, I didn't expect to enjoy this episode, but I found it very fun. And you know what? That That's something good that Doctor Who can do. I also like that it kind of gave kind of fan service or kind of link back to previous Doctor Who episodes. I, the thing that Jodie Whittaker's Doctor has ordered from Kablam is a Fez. It's like, well, I haven't ordered anything in a while. But, oh, yes. Still me? <laughs> and also when she, she, Ryan and Yaz have to hide later on, it's like, speaking of wasps, did I ever tell you about the time I met Agatha Christie? That links back to one of my personal favourite episodes from Series 4, The Unicorn and the Wasp. And I, I like that little callback. So, yeah, as I said, not the best episode, but, yeah, a pretty fun one. And a really enjoyable one. Hmm. Anyway, next episode, The Witchfinders with Alan Cumming. Alan Cumming is James the First. This one may sit a little uneasy, but we'll have to wait and see. Dylan, let's get a shift on. <laughs>